orthopedics. Now, uh, even this is important for you from a uh, uh, yeah, need point of view also. So, who coined the term orthopedics? That is uh, Nicholas Andre yeah? in the year 1741. So, it means uh, orthopedics means ortho bone and uh, pedics child. Okay, the straightening of the child. So, it encompasses a wide range of musculoskeletal problems from periodic orthopedics to the geriatric orthopedics. So we have to know a few of the deformities and the terminologies in the orthopedics, okay? So coxa means hip, okay? So coxa vara, coxa valga. Coxa valga means it's a valgus deformity in the hip, okay? And vara means it's a varus deformity. So coxa stands for the hip. Remember this. Genu refers to the knee, yeah? So, genu, valgum, varum, recurvatum. Okay. So, that corresponds with the genu. Pes means foot. Like pes, cavus. Okay. Toe is a hallux. So, cubitus refers to it. Hallux is the toes. A great toes. So, cubitus represents to the elbow. So, when you say cubitus varus, valgus, so that represents to the elbow. And the deformities in the hand are called as the manus. Manus, valgus, varus. So, when I cross these terms, you should not forget it which joint they are referring to. So, what does the valgus mean? So, valgus mean does the bone or the joint distant to the apex of the deformity, deviated away from the midline of the body, okay? That is valgus. So the same thing, the apex of the deformity, the bone or the joint, distant to the apex of the deformity, deviated towards the midline is called as the varus. Okay, so it applies there. So always remember, coxa goes with the hip, Genu goes with the knee, pes with the foot, toe, hallux, cubitus with the elbow, and a hand that is a manus, and valgus is the outward deviation from the midline, and uh, towards the midline deviation is the varus. So you should be knowing about the commonly with the bones. So we deal with the fractures, with the growth of the bones, the joints, the dislocations, the movements at the joints, the tendons, the, the support they give for the muscular activity or the avulsion injuries, muscles, the ruptures in the muscles, the tear in the muscles, ligaments, the sprain, like ankle sprain, okay? And we call it as LS strain, lumbosacral strain and ankle sprain. Okay. So nerves, the irritation of the nerve injuries, vessels, the compression or compromise, the tissues related with the tumors, the benign tumors or the malignant tumors, and the procedures like the ultrasound, CT scan, MRI. Okay. processes, physiotherapy, we have to get across. So what you're seeing here in these pictures, these are the picture presentation of the deformities. So the first picture which you're seeing, so where I'm showing the marker, so that is the unilateral congenital tilipus equinus varus. So this is a congenital tilipus equinus varus what you are seeing here. So what you are seeing here, this is a syntactile, where you are seeing the third and the fourth finger are attached to each other. 
and along with the additional little finger. So there is a polydactyly and syndactyly. So this condition is called as a polydactyly with syndactyly. Even when you are in the foot, you are seeing there. There is a syndactyly. Okay. The great toe, there is additional toe here. If you can see six, if you count here, one, two, three, four, five, six toes are there in the foot. And here also there are six fingers on either hand. So there is a polydactyly with syndactyly in the hand and the foot. And the first figure which we showed is the congenital tylipus equinus virus. So this is a deformity you are seeing in the metabolic fluorosis here. And in the picture what you are seeing is the infective foot infection. This is a mother mycosis. So this is the infective part, the tumorous part of the infection. So again, what you are seeing here, this is the open fracture of the leg. This is a grade 2 compound fracture exposing the femur bone. Okay. And what you are seeing here is, is the deformities in the hand. In the thumb, the metacarpophalangeal joint. Hello. Sir, the sir. What you are seeing in the deformities in the hand, in the rheumatoid patient. So, this is the deformities in the limb which you are seeing in the polio, the neuromuscular disorders. Again, what you are seeing in this pictures is the neoplastic tumors in the head of the humerus. Okay, and this is again the soft tissue tumor which you are seeing in the ulna and the elbow joint. You can see this is a soft tissue tumor. This has been operated and sent for a histopathology. And one more this figure which you are seeing commonly in the exams also you will be getting across this one. Clinically, very commonly, there is a osteoarthritis of the both knees with a genuvarum deformity. Okay. So, what you are seeing here is the genuvalgum, the outward deviation from the midline. So, from the, the bone or the joint distal to the apex of the deformity, deviating away from the midline of the body. Okay. Here. So, this is a Genuvalgum. The same thing here you see. The bone or joint distal to the apex of deformity deviated towards the midline. So this is a genuvarum. Okay. So the deformity is in the joint here and the tibial bone, the joint below is deviated towards the midline. So this is a genuvarum. So here this is genuvalgum. Okay. So you have to remember these terms, apply these terms. So when you are seeing even this possibly in your NEET examination, there can be pictures given to you and be asking what do you see in the picture and some MCQ will be put on there. Like whether it is a genovalgum or a manus, valgum or deformity. So coxa goes with the hip. You have to be very specific there. Right? Like coxa with the hip, geno with the knee, pest with the foot. Cubitus with the elbow, hand minus, okay? So, different specialties in orthopedics, okay? You have to, like you are having Mayeshwari or Natarajan, you have different topics are there for you covering the infectious arthritis or the arthritis, osteomyelitis part or the metabolic uh, disturbance in the bone, common fractures or osteochondral injuries, multiple are there. So these are all issues there where you go in the pediatric orthopedics. So the pediatric orthopedics, you will be seeing the congenital deformities, the fractures or the metabolic disorders like the rickets or the tumorous conditions. So there is a separate specialty of pediatric orthopedics, right? So orthopedics as a whole, the orthopedician 
operates, treats all the cases. Again, they having the sub specialities. Where you will be getting it. So the geriatric orthopedics again who will be treating mostly with the old age cases. Commonly will having the hip fractures or the bone fractures. Very commonly the intracapsular fractures or the trochanteric fractures, extracapsular fractures. They are the commonest one. Or the joint disorders, the knee replacements, hip replacements, which mostly go along with the geriatric patients. That's an orthoplasty. An orthoscopy. So all the extras now are after doing the master degree wants to be a hip replacement surgeon or a knee replacement. Uh, you can be a specialist in the ankle, elbow, and all the joints. So that is called as the orthoplasty. So where you are replacing the joints, where you do the orthotomy, you do the osteotomies. With the chamfer cuts and all, you get back the joint and give the functional activities to the person there. So the orthoplasty surgeon. So there are multiple fellowships there after your MS in orthopedics. So that is an orthoplasty. It is called as the the unit is called as orthoplasty, where you deal with the replacement of the joints. So most commonly you'll be hearing and seeing the ads for this uh, knee joint replacements, hip joint replacements. And we will be getting more advanced with the ankle and elbow also, even the prosthetic replacements of the joints. So other one is the arthroscopy. So what do you mean by arthroscopy? The keyhole one surgeries. So where you are not opening the joint with the regular open incisions and all, only we are going to make one, two or three micro incisions. One entry portal for the camera, the other entry portal for the instrument to pass in. You see, visualize the joint with the camera and with the other portal where you give a wash and use the instrumentation. In the knee joint, you can uh, repair the menisci or the do the shaving and the debridement of the torn menisci. Loose body risk can be removed. And even by arthroscopy, we do this joint, uh, sorry, what do you call the recumbent reconstruction, the ACL reconstruction, PCL reconstruction after the uh, Graft is prepared. Mostly the hamstring tendons are taken up for the graft, like this gracilis and tendonosis. Double strands are made, the elbow of the jigs. So the ACL, the PCL uh, reconstruction are done only, and mostly it's highly required for the people on the sports injuries. So the, for them to continue, they have to go for aggressive physiotherapy after the arthroscopy. So the key one surgeries is mostly the knee, hip, and uh, elbow joint and ankle joint, small joints, you can go with this arthroscopic. So the same one they are doing with the help of arthroscopy, joint debridements and uh, uh, getting back the, uh, removing the contractures to get back the knee movements. And even the tendon repairs, patella tendon reconstruction, patella femoral reconstruction. So that can be done with this field of arthroscopy, scope, okay? So you are using a, 70 degrees, 30 degrees scopes in the joints there. So even in the hip joint, you can be using the scope there, doing a arthroscopy. So this gives a better clinical visualization than the MRI. So that the MRI is giving a picture on the screen. Here, everything you are seeing with your eyes on the screen. So the camera is in your hand. You can see all the corners in the joint. In whichever way, we are going to move the camera down there and do the appropriate treatment. So, orthopedic traumatology, that is actually the bread and butter of every orthopedician. He should be well versed, very good with the trauma cases, because very commonly, because still the motion is there, the orthopedic is there. It's not never ending one. So, it's not going to stop there. So, till there is a motion, that is, there is a movement. You're walking around, you're moving in the vehicles and move, going on. So there is a movement of the joints and there is a motion around. So there is a lifetime scope for this orthopedic traumatology because twist injuries, strain injuries, or the leg, ligamentous injuries, what you say, the fractures, all come down to this traumatology. Okay. So all the fractures are dealt there where you're going to 
do with the conservative or the surgical fixation of the fractures follow up the patient and do the needful further an orthopedic rheumatology again this uh, is a field where again rheumatology again become a rheumatology field where we deal with this rheumatoid arthritis or the systemic lupus arthritis zero negative zero positive and different uh, arthritis where uh, most of these rheumatologists uh, deals with this uh, prefers the conservative line uh, of giving uh, the antibodies monoclonal antibodies or the uh, even the uh, suppressive drugs steroids uh, understanding the rheumatic condition and treating it so the most of the conservative line is preferred by them and when the surgical corrections are required then the orthopedician will interfere and uh, to the probable uh, ligament reconstructions or the deformity corrections for the functional usage of the limb by the patient and the medication with even the orthopedician can do and mostly because of the high dosage of steroids or multiple antibodies which are required so this separately it can be followed up by the rheumatologist so this is again one separate field of rheumatology so in orthopedic rheumatology we will deal with the conservative as well as the surgical aspects which others don't do it so even the deformities of the hand where we will be doing the tendon transfers the osteotomies for the and the deformity corrections okay. so orthopedic oncology so orthopedic oncology goes with the tumorous conditions the benign tumors the malignant tumors or uh, where they have uh, extending uh, across the joints where you have to resect the bone or the joint area and uh, try to salvage the limbs to as much as possible and we'll be going with the mega processes and uh, after the day the curatage uh, with the extended curatage the phenol usage the biopsy is the curatage part or the surgical part of biopsy and uh, mega process implantation to give a functional life to the patient even uh, recently uh, we are getting a better 3d version of the 3d printing to understand the deformities and the implants pre uh, operatively able to order the templates of the what the shape of the implant would be required for the reconstruction and the regenerative orthopedics where we are doing with the uh, cartilage cell stem cells for the cartilage uh, transposition the even uh, new, new advances are going up this uh, plasma therapy even uh, there are uh, spine uh, surgeries we go on with the doing of the correction of the scoliosis the straightening of the spine or the fixation of the spondylolisthesis the disc surgeries and uh, the core surgeries mostly will be taken up by the neurosurgeons even we do the cervical spine the lumbar spine and we even we do for the decompression of the tuberculosis anterior lateral approach anterior or the approaches and uh, do the degradement part and fix the fractures and even there mostly the tuberculosis case also the orthopedician enters it so there are different uh, surgeons like specialists like the shoulder surgeons or mainly going for the upper limb surgeries and uh, scopies upper limb surgeons like the hand surgeons lower limb surgeons so everywhere they are being a sub specialities it is being split on like uh, in the knee replacement there is a unicondylar bicondylar even uh, the genetic uh, sorry gender based implants are coming for the males females so on so every part is being split on like shoulder area upper limb separate surgeon lower limb surgeon hand surgeon when the hand surgeon again he goes with this deformity corrections or any ligamentous repairs or tendon injuries in the hand or the small phalanges fractures fixation with the special titanium plates screws so even that part they are taking up and the spine surgeon either talked about you the scoliosis surgeries or this surgery or a lift surgeries for spondylolisthesis 
trauma surgeons is uh, every orthopedic surgeon is initially a trauma surgeon and the tumor surgeons which is for orthopedic oncology these are all the different specialties have now come up where they add up this as a sub specialty along with the orthopedic part so gate so every person uh, to move around we need a gate this a synchronous forward and backward propulsion so the symmetric movement of the lower limbs resulting in the propulsion so it's nothing but walking so we have this swing phase stance phase okay so you see down there the swing and stance phase the one cycle again it goes to the swing and stance phase so stance is when the foot is on the ground that is made up of the heel strike okay again you are seeing the three one the flat foot and four you are seeing the two off so you see for you to understand the dark color limb and the light color limb the dark chocolate limb which you are seeing in the one heel strike okay two and three you are seeing the flat foot okay and in the fourth you are seeing the two off so when the toe off is happening again the opposite limb you can see there is a heel strike at the same time if you again see there is a swing phase the foot off the ground so when see your heel is striking the other side your toe off goes on you are in the swing phase okay so this you have to understand this stance when the swing phase because uh, every patient we even we see with the gait and understand what problem is there in the ankle joint or the foot or the knee joint or the hip or is it because of the spine the patient is presents with a different sorts of gait like antalgic gait rhodopa gait or the cervical palsy the scissoring gait or there are different conditions when there is a neuromuscular involvement so that you should understand for the gait so how to approach for a orthopedic patient so history the story of the patient to record the general examination body examination as a whole local examination examination of the affected part investigations what can be concluded by clinical exam the counseling uh, consent plan of management so they can be non operative operative management or with the splints and supports or physiotherapy and follow up for a long time occupational therapy and rehabilitation so so in history taking so that you so like you are in a different uh, uh, departments like when you have the clinics in the pediatrics gynecology medicine and everywhere, everywhere it's a basic thing is uh, to learn the bedside history taking and the last one year you are at a loss that you are not able to get exposed to the bedside to the patient because of the covid so uh, you, you are losing the real part of uh, the clinical examination mostly you are going on in the virtual so you are not in uh, touch with the patient to feel the patient or understand closely what the patient is uh, communicating with you or what you want to directly communicate with the patient and uh, what you want to perceive examine and understand what is given in the books so the particulars of the patient that is the name age sex occupation of the patient is important as the way they are working so because occupational hazards that has to be taken into account because the injuries the occupational hazard which you come most like on the pulmonology or the medicine part so in orthopedics also where they are working and they are working in the hinds area or in the construction sites so we also have to keep it there what is the occupation so what the better you can give for the patient and where the patient residing residence area is a common Uh, epidemic or endemic is a prone zones or what is the area there like fluorosis or anything there so region and the race they come from so these things should be taken from the particular patient 
So complaints in the chronic allergic order may be elected by questioning in some resistant patients. History of the presenting illness, narration like a story from the first complaint to the recent. Preferably connecting with the important positive and negative incidents and treatment received. So specific points about the symptoms like fever, you ask it. The type, the continuous, the low-grade fever, evening rise, intermittent, remittent, sudden onset, or uh, modified by medication, chills, rigors. Okay. So the pain type and started before the swelling is seen or after the swelling, like to rule out the malignancy or the inflammation or any benign growth. Okay. And the general types of pain in the colicky, the visceral radiating burning, paresthesia, the nerve irritation or compression, dragging in the musculoskeletal ligamentous, the throbbing pain when there is a fluid under the tension, gripping in cardiac, claudication in vascular and neurological blockade. Description varies with the patient way of explanation and likely to be modified by the medication. Again, the swelling, duration, mode of onset, site where the exact date started in the beginning, with the help of the swelling grows too big or difficult to assess under the lying structures, you have to feel for it. Progression of the swelling, similar swellings elsewhere, sometimes past history, deformity and disability and the function, that is the, the functional deficits which you get. Again, you ask for the past history, personal history, including the menstrual history in the females and the familial history. So clinical examination in orthopedics, actually when you come down for the clinical uh, exposure in our uh, OPDs, then you will have the live patients in the ward and the OP where you can get across all this. So this is a must for you because when you are uh, treating the patients in your uh, practice after you gain your degrees anywhere in the world, you have to go by this one because it should be synchronized in your directly right from the patient entry is a name, age, is history, is a completely take up the history, then go with the clinical examination before you come to your diagnosis. Okay. What are the investigations to be done? So general examination, local examination, you do for the inspection, including attitude and deformity in the limbs. Then you go for the palpation, normal or abnormal, percussion. Okay, in other body point of view, talking, they're looking the general signs for the nerve injuries. Tenderness points like the patient complex of spasm or sprain or pain. Auscultation useful for the vascular tumor in orthopedics. Movements, active movements, passive movements, okay, and in normal abnormal movements. Okay, measurements the sagittal plane, the coronal, horizontal planes, and angles. Special press as for the local examinations, trauma and non traumatic conditions like in the. We do for the Thomas test or the telescopy test, okay, or the orthodontic stress, Barlow's test. So different age group also, there are different sets of tests. And for every joint, there are separate set of tests. And for nerve injury, there are separate set of special tests, which you have to do. So we have to categorize for as per the case where you are examining and uh, what tests to be done. Again, you have to look for Pixel and proximal effects of the vascularity, adjacent tissues, joints, and lastly the lymph nodes. And other joints are also to examine the parts and the spine. So any associated uh, anomalies also should not be missed out there. So investigations. So the most common in orthopedics is an X-ray because anything uh, patient complaints in the bone or the joint. We are very much interested to look out for any hairline fractures or any ligamentous injuries which is causing a laxity of the joint or any intraarticular pathology or any fracture or any tumor mass or any adjacent growing tumor mass involved with the bone or the joint node down there or to follow up of the patient after the x-rays or the surgeries or the assessment of the deformities, the plan for the deformity correction for the making of the templates. We need the basic one everywhere is the X-ray in the two, two places, most commonly, the AP and the lateral views, anterior posterior and the lateral views. So 
the CT scan, the 3D CT scan, the computer tomography in the three dimensions where you want to visualize more of the bone. And even there is a CT angiogram where you can see the vascular structures. After this uh, injecting of the dye, you can see how closely they are going with the bones. Mostly we do for the uh, fractures near the joints or any malignant fractures to assess uh, where we have to do the osteotomy. How far is the neurovascular structure away from the site where we are planning for the surgeries, or there is the interposition of any vessel with a fracture fragment, anything? Even those will help with the CT scan for us. So, the MRI, the preferably the better one for uh, soft tissues for us to catch uh, in, uh, in the earlier part of the surgery in the osteomyelitis also. Even when the pictures are not visualized on the X-ray, the MRI can catch it very fast because the soft tissue reactions which you see adjacent to the bone, the edema or the lifting of the periosteum first, which you can catch in the MRI scans. So that will be giving a, a clearer picture about the medullary canal, the bones, the soft tissue surrounding structures, the nervous structures down there. The magnetic resonance imaging gives you a better picture. For so here, again, we have to be very clear that uh, no stainless steel implant or metallic devices in the body so that the magnet pulls out. They may cause hazard to the patient as well as the MRI unit. So ultrasound scan, which we are doing for the knowing of the soft tissue structures in the limb down there. When you are seeing in a tendinopathies or tendinitis, so we are seeing the ligamentous structures surrounding the joint, the tendon uh, attached to the bone, any tendinitis is there, enthesitis is there, or an intraarticular pathology is there, any swelling, locules, or in soft tissue mass. We can be seeing the ultrasound scan there. Even we go for the color doctor. Because here we are again we go to see any blood supply, additional accessory blood supply to the mass down there, which are visualizing there which is causing a problem for the patient. So ultrasound scan down there. Again, bone scan we're going to use for the radioisotope scanning where you see for the infections or the hot and cold spots. This was actually a shot out for your seniors. This time the bone scan was there. It was asked for two marks question for your seniors down there. So gallium and the indium bone scans are used. So gallium for the spine, indium bone scan for the osteomyelitis. Most commonly for the bone, whether it's a triphasic one, first is arterial, then the other one is uh, venous, then the third one is the bones. If all the three are positive, it indicates there is a probable lesion in the bone where there is a hot, cold, hot spots or cold spots. Depends upon the, how they are taken up in the bone, the scan, the dye which is injected, the radiocytive dye which is injected. In so the PET scan, the latest one, the positron emission tomography, which shows the tissue metabolic activity and uh, right from the cell growth of any tumor mass or anything, it's a very good investigation which gives you the picture. And mostly in the brain, it gives the mapping of the cell Alzheimer's disease and all. So it's a very useful investigation for us there. So that is the DEXA. Evil energy X ray of the optometry. This is done for the bone density or where you can see for the osteoporosis. So, even this can be a short note for you. So, just keep it in mind uh, because last time bone scan was asked. So, any of this can be coming for your uh, exams. So, CM is the C shaped image intensifier. So, we use mostly in this in the theaters. So the bone visualization during the surgery, even for the landmark identification for the spine surgeries, or when you're doing the surgeries, you need to know for this uh, entry point for the nails or the guide wires, or the putting of the intramedial interlocking screws into the bone up into the canal. So this gives us the eyes for the surgeon to look into the skeletal system and to fix up the fractures or to work up with the particular pathologies and to know the proper anatomical fixation what's going on what to be done giving a 
better results for the patient. So we need a 80% of the cases we need in orthopedics the CM. So these are the different invasion we talked about. This is what we are seeing in the AP lateral view of the leg. So one joint above and one joint below should be taken. So we can see the complete joints in involvement in the intraarticular there. So there is a fracture of the tibia here and the tibia fibula also in the two levels, segmental tibia. And this is a butterfly pigment we are seeing in the lateral view of the tibia fracture. So this is a common uterine fracture, both bones. Okay. So again, here what you're seeing in this is the femur, what you're seeing is in the lesion there. What you're seeing is that this is an osteomyelitis of the femur, where there is a head is resolved, short neck, coxa vara, okay? So this is a normal coxa valga here, normal coxa hip here, left side. And the right side, what you're seeing is a coxa vara. With a, Tract here for the infection part. So this is again what you are seeing in the ninth peak, dorsal lateral aspect. On the right side, this was a tumor. This was an ABZ tumor which I operated last year. This was a non uh, hematogenic. Means this was a, lucky that this was a benign tumor, not a malignant one. Like so, we are lucky to get out with it. We did a, a complete resection of the tumor. In the prone position, right? So this is what you're seeing is an MRI, where you can visualize the bone, the medullary canal, the grade, you can grade the type of degeneration, or the place of the soft tissue with the infection, everything you can see in the MRI here. So this is again the ultrasound. So for the same patient, or what you're seeing this X-ray here, this is MRI, this is ultrasound. There is a collection of the pus in the hip joint here. So this is again other x-ray which you're seeing in the CM, where we have fixed the fibula fracture with the rush nail. Okay. So these are the different x-rays where we do the templating for the hip fractures. This is a spine where you're seeing for the scoliosis and uh, height of the vertebra, AP and lateral views. So this is again the bone scan where you're seeing the hot and cold spots where you're in with the radial hypnotite. So gallium works well for the spine and the indium WBCs for the other bones infection. So these are the hot and cold spots, what you're seeing here. So the management of the orthopedic patient. So this is a CTEV, what you're seeing is a foot ankle orthosis. The brace there. You see the pontsity, there is a bar here, the shoes here, which are keeping in 70 degrees of external rotation. Okay. And uh, there will be about 10 to 15 degrees of uh, bowing here to keep the foot in dorsiflexion. So this is to be worn by the child for 23 hours for the initial three months, then later only during the night time or the sleeping hours for the age, up to age of four to five years. And when the patient is ambulance in the data, they can be given the CTV boots. So this is again, the, what you're seeing is the plaster. The plasters are the, I mean, uh, by splints, what you're seeing down there. So above elbow. And uh, uh, there's a cast down there. And this is arm pouch. What you're seeing down here, this is the arm pouch for the resting of the upper limb in uh, flex position so that the weight is taken away from the shoulder joint and the patient is on a clavicular brace because he had a fracture of the clavicle the clavicular brace is given and he has been put on this arm pouch so that the upper limb weight is transmitted to the axial skeletal there so this the clavicle the upper limb mass is passed through the central part through the clavicle. So to avoid the improper weight distribution and destruction of the fracture, the fracture is reduced by this conservative line of brace and arm pouch is given. So again, operative management, which I've shown you the X-rays there, supports 
So this is again uh, what the patient doing here is the finger exercise with the dynamic pop up screen. This is okay. So when there is a reduce a finger drop or wrist drop, these screens are given for the proper action. So again, processes. This is a process for the amputee amputees where you get different uh, process for the bilone, abone, or the upper limb amputees where uh, after two to three months when the stump has healed well, a process is given which is replacing the anatomical part. Orthosis is something which is supporting the anatomical part. Okay, And the processes is something which is replacing the anatomical part for the functional improvement, for the functional support. Occupational therapy, the physiotherapy, occupational therapy, where we, the, it is given in the in our hospital also the physiotherapy, where we have different modalities like ultrasound, shortwave death therapy, interfacial therapy. So these therapies help in reviving the patient, even with the occupational therapy for the patient and the rehabilitation. So once the patient has a different uh, deformities or inabilities, the patient is understood, studied, and uh, appropriate uh, exercises and uh, education is given for the patient in the rehabilitation so that he can live a individual comfortable life with the least support from his assistants. So the surgical what you're seeing here, this is a knee replacement which I have done here. So complete total knee replacement where you are seeing the Arthritic joints have been removed, orthoplasty, this is called as okay. So, this is other x ray of the tumor resection and prosthesis placement. So, this is a place where the patient had a big tumor. So, you don't see any bone here in the femur here. So, entirely the proximal femur with the shaft has been resected and cemented. Modular prosthesis is placed here. In this patient here. So what you're seeing is the oncology surgery which was done here in the hospital. And what you're seeing again here is the same ankle fractures with different modalities. One is the plate and screws. Other one you're seeing with only screws and tension band wiring technique we have fixed up the ankle here. And what you're seeing is this a compound uh, wound over the foot, open wound and there is a fracture of the great toe. So this guy had lost the Great toe. It was a great near total amputation of the great toe dangling. So we had to remove the great toe, disarticulate it, okay, traumatic amputation and uh, close up the wound. And what you're seeing here is this is the Elizaros. So in this, this patient, last two months back we had done this. So he had an ankle uh, arthritis, sorry, infective arthritis about since four and a half years. So we did the orthodosis of the ankle joint and uh, put a ring fixator here. Okay, And this is again another uh, proximal tibia comminuted fracture. We have done the Ilizaro. So last week we have removed this also. The patient is wonderfully well happy. Within just six months the fracture is healed. She had a proximal tibia complete shaft comminuted fracture again a separate uh, this will be a fracture with the fibula fracture with the anchor. So these are the external fixated techniques like the Elizaro technique. Okay, we have done this. So even these pictures can be kept in the knee and the examination they will be kept there for you to identify what is it. So, okay, the first one what is the orthoplasty of the knee. This is a tumor resection and modular process for the hip. This is an open reduction interfixation fixation of the ankle with plate and screws, and this is a desmodic screw. This is a tension band wiring of the middle malleus. Okay. This is an open fracture with a post traumatic uh, toe amputation. So, uh, advice for you to be an uh, orthopedic surgeon, physician, physiotherapist, psychotherapist. And pain therapist. So you can give medicines or operate or to put the plaster or the splint for children, males, females, young and old ages. There is a wide scope. So this is an invitation for this era of your new medicos 
you are in the eighth ninth terms to think about be an orthopedic surgeon join us